Alrighty. You can just sit here watching me clip all this for a minute, I suppose. Just uh, got one of these frilly silvered edges, so I've got to give it all a bit of a snip here. Just want to talk about a uh, bit of an extension on a video I made previously. Um, yes, that's right, I throw it on the floor. I've got a huge pile of <laughs> shit on the floor, which I cleared out once before, and another one that looks like it's building up. Every now and then, you, you know, clean it off the floor. Anyway. Just here making uh, trousers. And I was just thinking before about uh, another particular character uh, who used to uh, avoid doing anything at any damn cost. Now, this guy's currently in a bit of uh, crapola due to uh, cryptocurrency shenanigans. Um, some of you will know who I'm talking about if I say they're being investigated by about six different government agencies right now. Anyway, well, they're fucking looking down the barrel at being charged with fraud. I was thinking as I was doing all this about their old t-shirt drives and how they always used to be trying to sell t-shirts but so many times regardless of 80 plus plus thousand subs they were battling to even hit the minimum order of 25 shirts of a particular type we're talking long sleeve, short sleeve they had to hit a minimum of 25 before the company would even silk screen it. You may be interested to know that while a lot of shirts are made in China for the United States market, it quite potentially is just as cheap to make them in Mexico, if not cheaper in some cases. Especially now since the 2009 Labor Act that means that Chinese wages go up about 14% every year, I believe it is, ever since 2009. What's even more interesting, though, is that he's got a Filipino wife and all the world of time on his hands, and he could bloody well do this. But he never actually would, you know, he'd absolutely avoid doing anything. Another interesting thing is, once the shirts come from China, they are in fact silk screened in the United States. Most silk screening does occur in the United States, interestingly enough. I'm not saying all, but there's a good deal that does uh, for shirts that have logos on there. But the most intriguing thing was this guy would frolic around all day and yet he would never make any of the stuff himself. Oh, hell no. Absolutely not. So that's why I'd get in a panic that they hadn't hit the minimum order of 25. And uh, I'm going to unravel these pants. These have just been sewn up in the crotch, actually, and they're still all rolled up inside out and bugging those what, so I'll try and unravel it all. Now, intriguingly enough, he had the power. He could get a $20 blooming eBay sewing machine, which is exactly what this white thing is here. And he could have gone and hadn't done it, but no, oh no. Would not happen. I just think, you know, he could quite easily do it, you know, 
plenty of time. Filipino wife. And if you haven't seen Asians work in sort of constant production like environments, Vietnamese or Chinese, like I've seen, holy smoke, they can fly. They move that fast that white people would have RSI within five minutes of moving the speed they do. And no doubt she's got that same genetics in her that would allow her to move incredibly fast with factory style work. Yeah, yeah, there's a baby and all that, but the baby wasn't always there, so that's not an excuse necessarily. And furthermore, you could take care of all the silk screening process really easy. What he could have done is change his logo to the uh, baby's hand and then just sit there with a little bub right bang in the friggin' paint back on the shirt, in the paint back on the shirt, in the paint back on the shirt. Bump, 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 bump. So you could even get the baby involved in it all. You know, wouldn't be that hard. For those of you who don't know, there was an earlier time where said character went to make uh, <laughs> drink coasters. Of course, most of these things these e-beggars sell are practically useless or made by someone else. And you may say, well, that might have been useless, but at least he made it. But here's the kicker. He didn't. He tried to subcontract these drink cases. All he was doing, basically, was trying to plane and cut up the wood to make the drink coasters. He tried to subcontract the actual logo on the drink coasters to a university student who apparently was Pakistani or something like that and uh, quite honestly he looked like Borat until the guy ran off with a girlfriend and he hadn't seen the guy <laughs> for weeks. And everyone was saying, well, him and his girl have gone off doing some just random spontaneous road trip or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he had to get his soldering iron back. But really speaking, if you want to do a logo properly into wood, you use something akin to a, basically a branding iron. I'm not allowed to show it, but my father made one up. It was absolutely brilliant. Welded one together more recently for a community group he's in because they are likely to make some wood projects and they wanted to put their logo into it. So he welded this thing up and I saw it before it was even finished and I saw it after it was finished and holy smoke. Like a lot of things my father makes, it's, it was as good as something you could buy. But instead, this character lost hold of his solder and iron for <laughs> a number of weeks. And uh, needless to say, not many drink coasters really happened. But uh, it's almost incredible, you know, the amount of excuses and... and jumping and jiving and, and anything like that to avoid really doing any work. And when there's a chance that they do get to do some work, they always, always, always want to try to farm it out to someone else. So they still don't have to do work. You know, some of you guys know there's stickers that have been sold and different things like that, you know, absolutely none of it is done by the person. Because, oh, I'm too busy on my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. And you think how much more of a better effect it would have to sell something. Now, I'm not selling these damn trailers. I'm going to probably wear these, well, at least next week, not tomorrow. Maybe the day after, but probably next week. But if 
let's say, for instance, that same character was to make trousers and sew them up himself or have his wife sew them up, how much more enthusiastic do you think people would be to buy them versus some made in China crapo that's silk screened in the United States by some American company who's basically set itself up to act as a fundraising company to print out shirts and stuff for different community groups and charities in order to raise funds for them. But of course requires a, uh, a certain amount to be sold before they can really make a go of it, before they're willing to actually fulfill any of the order. But if they actually knew that that young lass was down there with his own machine banging away, because heaven forbid it wouldn't be your husband, how much more enthused do you think that they'd be to buy them? Because all of a sudden, the person you watch on YouTube, who for those of you who don't know, I met this person in person, in fact he come to this very house, and charged his laptop in the room behind me on top of me wood heater how much do you think people would go for something that was made by some guy they like to watch on the internet especially if it's a fairly renowned person with a substantial amount of subs not just the freaking whatever it is 1500 I've got It would be a little bit more special, wouldn't it? Imagine some of these RVs. <laughs> Jeez, I'd love to see video of them running the blast and sewing machine in an RV. The first thing they'd do, the very first thing they'd do is complain they didn't have enough room to cut the cloth. I guarantee you. I guarantee that it happened. That'd be part of a whinge video. <laughs> well, you know, there's tables out there that have got folding legs and you can do intriguing things with them. And with me, you know, <laughs> until recently, I was using a table that was designed to fold up against the wall. But anyway, that's just a couple of little uh, thoughts. Extended thoughts on... Uh, these e-beggars who do absolutely anything they can to avoid working a real job.